Hello, my friends, and welcome back to our continued mind let's play is Attorney Apollo Justice Trilogy Dual Destinies Turnabout Academy. My name is the Fatless Bird, this is your Star Wars Game Channel, and today, today we go and defend our friend, and it doesn't look good for, for Mr. Hugh O'Connor. Yeah, uh, only one way to figure out how this is going to end is means involved in all this in some way. Will my theory hold out? And then one way to find out. October 26, 9.45 a.m. District Court Defense Army number three. Hope you all are having a wonderful, fantastic, amazing, awesome day today. Were you able to sleep last night? Huh? Oh, sleep. Sure, I slept. For a grand total of zero hours. Yeah, I know that feeling sometimes. Guten Morgen, you two. You look like you're ready to put on a real show. But before you do, I have a good luck gift for you. The voice print analysis came back, and the results couldn't be more clear. The voice in the mock trial video and the tape recording are one and the same. In other words, the recordings of fabrication. Tape recorder updated in the court record. The voice on the tape says you're a goner, just like in Junior's script. It's been identified as a fake. The lab is continuing the study of the tape. So far, they've found signs of overdubbing. But it's going to take a bit longer to recover the audio that was erased. Dump. What? Who's there? Wait. Phoenix? Did you see it was? No, I get a quick look, but they got away. No, that's not Phoenix. That was someone that was spying on us, possibly? I think it might have been Hugh. I bet he was eavesdropping. I wonder if he saw a hand. Oh, I'm sure he wasn't the only one just now. I bet Robin and the Fox Girl were listening in, too. I will make sure they don't make a run for it. This is my final gift to you. Thanks, Clavier. Okay, all that's left now is to reach out to the truth. Time for a mini Corsa Seal workout. I'm Apollo Justice, and I'm fine. Your turn. I'm Athena Sex, and I'm fine. Let's go. What is that song? Reach out to the truth. I know there's a song like that. That basically says reach out for the truth. Is that Persona 4? Uh, hold on. Reach out for the truth, Persona 4. Uh, yes. It's, it's called reach out to the truth. And that is a Persona 4 song. Okay, cool. I can't believe I remember that. Huh. Day 2 court is now in session. All rise. Court will now reconvene for the trail of Juniper Woods. The sex brigade is totally psyched. Er, uh, I mean, the defense is ready, your honor. Uh, the prosecution is ready as well. Er, uh, I mean, isn't that right, Prosecutor Blackwell? Huh. Yeah, well, move right along. Yes, this adjournment was unexpected, yeah, it was necessary. But I'll uh, be running a tight ship here today. So no funny business from anybody, understood? Your baldness, Robin Newman and Hugh O'Connor have recanted their confessions. But later, I shall go them at leisure to find whether I can charge them with perjury. Yeah, well, this sure complicates matters. I don't think it's not going to get it ready. Still, one must not overlook the facts. Now about the school camera photo that was submitted yesterday. A pity, but that evidence is no longer relevant to this case. The art room clock runs fast. It cannot function as an accurate measure of time. As for the bungling detective who overlooked that, he is paying for his failures as we speak. You know what I noticed in? They never explained why the clock was running over. I mean, they made that a contention in the case. And it was just like, oh yeah, oh yeah, the, the clock's an hour off. 
Okay. And? I mean, normally when there's evidence that's introduced and there's something wrong with evidence, there's a reason why it was wrong. Now, maybe we'll find out that that's more fraudulent evidence that was introduced and therefore it's not reliable and that's why that's why it happened and I really hope they do because if they don't I will feel like there's a part of this case that's that's missing poor detective Fulbright I hope he returns to work with all his body parts intact <laughs> hmm but if that's the case then what will we the accrues there's this old person who could have moved the body from the art room to the stage and I mean to prove it here this day. It's just like Detective Fulbright said. But what else does he have up his sleeve? My understanding of this heinous crime is thus. The murder took place near the center of the art room as evidenced by the blood stain. Blood was also found on some pottery next to the window over the maintenance area. Which is to say that the body was carried over to that very window. From there, it was dropped down to the maintenance area below. And though there were nearly a scratch to the body aside from the fatal wound, that too was, per the script, a high jump mat was employed to cushion the fall. Then a ball cart was used to haul the body over to the stage. So I still think it was wrapped in the governor flag. That's not very clever. I mean, it's the same exact body movie scheme as the script. Anyone could have moved that body that way. Objection. Your propensity to spew forth words before you think is not very clever either. Why you? Moreover, the prosecution has a witness, which is more unfortunate for you. Witness, it's time for you to come forth. And, of course, it's you. <laughs> well then, will the witness please state his name and occupation? Q O'Connor. I am a senior at Themis Legal Academy, and I'm studying to be a lawyer. Yesterday, I told that the lawyer there that I would testify to the truth. So I intend to cooperate fully in today's trial. Are you happy now, Miss Sykes? Ang, what's he up to now? The court appreciates your cooperation, Mr. O'Connor. Now your testimony, if you would, please. Witness testimony. What O'Connor saw. The lecture hall. <clears throat> The lecture hall was packed before the mock trial, but the rest of the campus was empty. Well, that's when I saw Juniper dragging a large man from behind the stage. I was watching her from a vantage point between the stage and the maintenance area. She was heading towards me, so I assumed she was on her way to the maintenance area. But I didn't have time to stand around and see what she did after that. The real truth hurts so much, doesn't it, Miss Sykes? Or maybe you thought I was going to bring up something else entirely against your client? Ugh, never a snappy comeback when I need one. He's coming straight at us today, using any means possible. To protect the students who had to climb up high when setting up the stage, a mat was brought over to the stage from the warehouse. Our client is a student council president. What's wrong with her taking it up on herself to put the mat away after they used it? Objection! Oh, there is plenty wrong. There is but one mat in the entire school that could function as that could cushion a fall from such lofty heights. Ergo, the matic question was indispensable to moving the body. Ark, it sucks being the last to know everything. Huh, I think I get it now. The drag marks we saw behind the stage were made by the mat. 
Hmm. The only matter that thick this was where the bodies seem to have been trapped. But it would be hard to deny a possible link to that case. We're off to a bad start again. You sure we're okay, Athena? Uh, it's game on, Hugh. It's game on. I'm gonna turn your arrogant perfect score, grin, into a tear eyed front of failure. Cross examination. What O'Connor saw. The lecture hall was packed before the mock trial, but the rest of the campus was empty. Hold it, hold it, hold it, right there! Uh, what? I was just getting to the important part. Eager to unsheath your blades, Sykes don't know. Your heavy breath heaves to where I stand. Objection! Tisk, how rude! A human's breath doesn't travel anywhere near that far. So, the only issue is distance. Hmm. You're not denying that you're a heavy breather. Ark, I'm just saying that scientific studies have proven that it's not. Hang in there, Athena. No matter how many insults I hurl, it won't affect the judge's opinion of you. What about my own self esteem? Aww. Heh, <laughs> well, let's get back to what happened before the mock trial. That's when I saw Juniper dragging a large man. Matt, not a man, a mat, from behind the stage. Our client was simply putting the mat away. It had nothing to do with this case. Objection. That is where you are wrong. There is but one mat in the entire school that could cushion a three-story fall. Hence, the mat dragged by the accused was essential to moving the body. Ugh. If we win this one, I promise to donate another thick mat to the academy. <laughs> now, show me how to show you the truth. You'll have my full cooperation. I was watching her from a vantage point between the stage and the maintenance area. Mr. O'Connor, are you positive you're saying exactly what you said? I was between the stage and the maintenance area, and was behind the backdrop. Hmm, he's sticking to his guns. The issue here is where he was standing, which you say he saw Juni. But nothing I say will mean anything without evidence. It's time to dig a little deeper. Oh, and before you ask, yes, I had my glasses on. Therefore, I am positive it was Juniper. That is not an issue. She was heading towards me, so I assumed she was on her way to the maintenance area. You shouldn't assume anything. It only shows that you're not positive. Objection. Hmm, such wild momentum. Perhaps you were a raging bull in your past life. Objection. Tess, don't compare me to some stupid farm animal. Huh. Boy, justice don't know. Our assertion is Juniper was simply putting the mat away. In that case, where would she be taking it? Oh, um, to the storehouse over in the maintenance area. Precisely. Therefore, there is not wrong with the witness's judgment in this matter. It is your wild charges that are the issue here. But I cannot help if you keep seeing red. He's going to get a face full of justice, a Paul style, if he keeps that up. Heh. <laughs> anyway, I saw her heading towards me. But I didn't have time to stand around and see what she did after that. Then it's entirely possible that someone else with the body, correct? Objection! Heh. <laughs> Are you mad or merely delusional? Everyone was in the lecture hall before the mock trial. The rest of the campus was empty. Ergo, the only part of probable suspects were the three trial participants. I know. Thank you for stating the obvious. I also know that you, Hugh O'Connor, were one of the participants. 
Mr. Confidence sure goes all out when he tells the truth. Well, I don't think he meant any of that to be misleading, but it doesn't make it factual. Careful now, Athena. A genius like you could be leading right into a trap. I'd be surprised if he wasn't, but all I could do is charge forward with both eyes open. Was that line from Dune? First step towards bringing a trap is only existed? Alright, I was watching her from a vantage point between the stage and the main area. This right here has to be something because she mentioned it. I was watching her from a vantage point from the stage. I don't and maintenance area. I don't see anything here that helps me. There's a fence there. Does that matter? There's a fence there. Does that matter? Maybe it does! So, you saw the back of the stage from between the stage and the maintenance area. Well, let's take a look at this photo taken by Miss Cutterbutt, shall we? This photo shows the students setting up the stage the day before the mock trial. Do you see the big construction screen to the right of the stage in the background here? Well, yes, in fact, there were a bunch of those next to my house until a few days ago, too. It was so noisy behind there, but I couldn't take a peek. Oh, how it piqued my interest. Exactly, Your Honor. You cannot see past such screens. That is the purpose. Now, let's see. How exactly is that screen positioned again? Aha. Since it was to the right of the stage, it should be right here. Wow, I can't believe I saw that. And from this vantage point, the witness claims to have seen our client behind the stage backed up. Oh my, but the screen would have been completely in the way. That's right. Therefore, the witness could have possibly seen a client from this point. Urgh, ouch! Alright, we won battle one. Order, order! Mr. O'Connor, have you been lying to this court again? That screen. Right. It must have slipped my mind. What? Are you telling me Mr. Genius forgot something as little as big as that? There are two kinds of memory lapses. The normal kind you mouth breathers have. And the genius level lapses of memory that people like me have. Why don't you just admit that it was a normal everyday brain fart already? Will the witness now please receive what he remembers minus the lapse of memory and actually be truthful this time? Heh, <laughs> that's easy. I was on the other side of the screen. In other words, I witnessed Juniper from the stage side of the screen. Objection! You are testifying that our client was behind the stage. But need I remind this court, the back of the stage is not visible from the front. To actually see our client from behind the stage, from the side, from, to actually see our client behind the stage from the stage side of the screen, the witness himself would also have to be in the same area behind the stage. The fact that there was an ellipsis there and the second part of the sentence was delayed from the first part made me totally not understand what she was saying at first. But in that case, our client would have definitely seen Mr. O'Connor. Yowch! Objection. Nice one, Athena. Keep it up. Objection. Yep, there it is. I knew that was coming. All right, golden boy, is this not your chance? Telling the truth will be like a weight lifted from your chest. The truth? What truth? The fact that golden boy here was where he initially stated. That is to say, he was between the maintenance area and the stage. 
But then the screen would have blocked his view of Objection. On the ground, yes. His view would have been blocked indeed. But consider how smoke always wants to rise up high. Uh, Athena, look at the photo again. Do you think? Something on the other side of the screen. Something high enough to see the stage. Wait, was he driving the truck? No way, this crane right here? Oh, the, the crane, sorry. I thought it was... Yeah, that's not a truck. I don't remember seeing the crane there the day of the Maktail. Me neither, but it's probably said to assume it was moved before you found the body. That's far enough, Prosecutor Blackbell. Remember, you promised. Ha! <laughs> I recall making no such promise. It was you who came blubbering to me about keeping quiet in exchange for the information. Erg! What's all this about the promise? Is this about whatever Blackbell is using against him? And what's it got to do with going into the crane? Golden Boy did not go up in that crane for... Fun. No, he was working part time as a crane operator within school grounds. What? You mean tell me a high school student was operating a crane? The witness. Er, I mean, I object to the prosecutor's last statement. There is no proof that I ever operated that crane. Actually. There just might be something that proves that you did. What? If this whole part-time job thing is true, I doubt it would be limited to a single day. You were probably working at the same site as the previous day, too. Is this what you're thinking of, Athena? I don't see him in that crane, though. That just looks like a, a generic person. I mean, it just looks like a generic... ...person. Wearing glasses. I mean, he's got this red thing around his neck, so it's hard to see. But the hair matches. Oh my god, has this been here the whole entire time? Has this legitimately been here the whole entire time? Wow! Talk about hiding something in plain sight. Yep, as the court can see, this photo captured the king's operator. And if you look carefully enough, he bears a definitive resonance to Mr. O'Connor. Are you serious? This is ridiculous. How oh, very interesting. Let's just say in teen, whether this is ridiculous as the witness maintains. The defense agrees with the prosecution. Let's bring the facts to light. Hmm, well, that's all very well and good, but just how do you propose to do that? The prisoner's photo has one really distinguishing feature. I'm not 100% sure, but it's at least worth a try. We can clearly identify the prisoner's photo as a witness by examining. Um, well, his neck has that red thing. It's the only thing that makes sense his neck, because he's got that red thing around it. I don't see it on him. For me, I would. Think about his hair. I mean, the color hair, for example, looks the same. The glasses looks the same. The figure in this photo is wearing a very unique object around his neck. Well, yes, you can see it right there. But then, are uh, you saying you mean to, uh... Uh, Mr. Arcana's neck is almost entirely concealed by his dark collar. But that's exactly what I believe this warrants further examination. No, not a chance. That would be a blatant violation of my privacy. Heh. <laughs> you are a disgrace of a man. Now start unbuttoning that collar before I hack it off. Wow, that's, uh, violent? Yeah, what's the big deal? Now let's see your neck. Uh, you sure you're not a vampire? It's gonna be bad to expose my neck to someone like you. 
Okay. But I guess I have no choice. It is a red object. Huh. Hmm, oh my! So, where did you buy that neckband, if I might ask? I didn't buy it. It's handmade, and there's only one like it in the world. Well, it sure looks like the neckband in the photo. Should we have the photo analyzed? Heh. <laughs> you are one irritating lady. Fine. I admit it. I work a part-time construction job. It has nothing to do with our school. Operating heavy equipment no big deal for a guy who can parallel park one-handed. But I never expected one of my jobs would take me to my own school. But when you factor in all the required tests and apprenticeship period, why, wouldn't you have to be at least 20 to have a license for operating a crane? Oh, um, about that. You see, I'm a genius. So, uh, you know. Objection! Did he lie about his age? What is suspense with this inane charade, Golden Boy? No, Prosecutor Blackwood, please don't. High school seniors are 19 at most. Does they fail to complete the requirements? But that does not apply to you. Does it, Mr. O'Connor? Why does it apply? He's a senior, so he's around that age, right? No, don't, please. <laughs> Actually, Golden Boy here is 25. He took a seven year break from school. <laughs> Wait, come again? Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, um, how did he get into the school at 25? Take a gander at the official school enrollment documentation. It's all right here. Urgh, ouch! The 25? You mean he's older than me? 25 year old high school student? Why does the text keep stepping? Stop, stop! Stop with this skipping the text! Hey, a seven year break. Seven years. I have just one thing to say. There are two kinds of seven year breaks. The ordinary kind, you math readers take. And the genius kind, people like me take. Did you say that? Gotcha. Like, literally? Get a new line. But a genius would become quickly a chore for a seven year break. I think I had that backwards, Athena. Heh. <laughs> Even geniuses make mistakes. I just happened to make mine only seven years in a row. Only Hugh could get away with using only like that. I mean, it's so different from me, like, watching a show like Buffy. Uh, what, Charisma Carpenter? Who played, uh, Cordelia? Wasn't she, like, 30 or something? And she was playing, a uh, high school student or, or something like that hold, hold on I'm, i want to check that out um how old was prisma carpenter in buffy she was 27 she was 27 playing the 16 year old which i guess is kind of common for actors and actresses sometimes in hollywood but still yeah i mean it, it, it's very weird it, it's very weird what you know enough of this jibber dabber Suffice to say, the witness was up at the crane when he saw the cues dragging the mat. The cues readied all she needed to move the body immediately prior to doing so. That much is clear. I see no need to deliberate the matter further. Hmm. Considering that the body was moved in the same manner as the script, I, I find Prosecutor Blackwell's claim to be quite persuasive. Does the defense care to dissuade me? Ugh. As long as the mat was used to move the body, Junior is going to be under suspicion. What if it wasn't used to move the body? Come on, think. Approach it differently. Come on, spin it. Athena, I just thought of something. What was Hugh doing in the crane right before the mock trial? He couldn't have been on the job at the time. I mean, he was waiting for the trial to start. 
Yeah, why was he in the crane? Wait, you don't think. Your honor. Uh, yes, Miss Sykes. I've got it. I got an amazing idea that will turn the prosecution's claim on its head. A little conjecture has never stopped us before. Interesting. Mr. O'Connor, you were using the crane to move the body? The body was just like it was in the script, so it must have been moved like in the script, too. At least that's what the prosecution believes. How simplistic, even foolish. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things, um... It's one of those things where... Where when you look at it... The, the body cannot have been moved. The way that the game is telling us. The body had to be moved differently. Now, I thought the body was moved using the, uh... The pulley system uh, with the Gavineer flag. But what if the crane was using with the body? So as soon as that popped up, I instantly knew, okay, he had to been with the body. I just don't know how yet with the crane. Those are pretty strong words, Athena. You sure about this? The witness is a licensed crane operator. He could have used it to move the body. Objection! Hmm, why hell, Golden Boy? Do you care to chime in? I intend to say no more on the matter. Save that this does not bode well for you. Wait, he's on my side this time. Was this another trap? Heh, <laughs> watch this. I can use a bow and arrow one handed. Wow, that's a crazy level of dexterity. I can even drive a crane with one hand. That's easy. But operating the crane itself is so complex, it requires both hands. Now, I would have the court look at this. Bloody hand? Oh, please tell me that's a ketchup stain. It's basically going to say that he couldn't have moved the crane or operated the crane because his hand was injured? You wish. My hand was injured and required surgery. That's the reason I kept my hand in my pocket all this time. I have already verified this with the hospital treatment. Quite a nasty wound, they say. So, so, how did you hurt it? I see no reason to discuss that. There's no relevance to this case. Two hands are required to operate complex machinery such as a crane. Ergo, on the day of the mock trial, the witness was incapable of moving the body by crane. And now I'm the fool. I planned on moving the crane the night before the mock trial, but then I got injured. I wanted to keep my part-time job a secret. I had to do it just before the mock trial instead. Ark, it's here I thought this was a big break we've been waiting for. Now that the defense's sophistry is laid bare, I would have the court recall my claim. Well, the body was dropped out of a third floor window to a mat near the maintenance area. Well, then a ball cart was used to move it to the stage. See, I've been paying to teach. Well done, your baldness. Now consider this. The accused was slight sighted dragging that mat. Ergo, it was she who moved the body. Well, I think we're on the right track, Athena. You do? Yeah, Juniper remains the prime suspect we assume the body was moved per this first script. So as a defense, you have to figure out how else the body could have been moved. But, but... Oh, is he telling me to think of another way besides the crane? Miss Sykes, if you have a counter-argument, this court would love to hear it. And if... If you do not, it's time for the verdict. Isn't that correct, your baldness? So maybe I was right about the police system. The crane is just a red herring. Objection! No, not yet. All I have to do is show that the body wasn't moved like it was in the script, right? Well, that would show that the man had nothing to do with the case. 
Here is a sword. Equate me now. And that cuts down sophistic lawyers. Its name is Evidence. Tisk, you don't scare me. Force a smile, Athena. You can do it. What's wrong with your face, Athena? It's a weird mix of terror and a creepy grin. Just focus on how the body could have been moved without it being dropped. How could anyone lower it without just dropping it? It's not like it could fly. I believe I can fly. Or maybe it could. After all, there is a way to zip between the item and the stage. About time we got here. So I was right all along about this. Someone could have easily used that thing. I love how they're so vague. It's that thing. Hmm? Oh yes, of course. Miss Six, the court would like to see what you have for us. All I have to do is show the tiniest shred of a possibility. The mat and ball cart weren't used to move the body. This is what was used. It was the flag. Take that. By using this and just right, the body could have been moved without the mat. Really? I would love to hear how that would be possible. Yeah, I'd love to hear how to. Okay, um, I, I know it's a pulley in the mat and the, the flag, but I need to say somehow... I clicked on the wrong thing. It wasn't the Gavineer flag. It was the school banner. This blood is on it. I clicked on the wrong thing. I clicked on the wrong thing. Miss Six, I'll be your job in case you've forgotten. Oh, right. I know there's something that connects the art room and the stage. I just had to show it. All right, I clicked on the wrong thing. The key here is the thing that ties the art room and the stage together. Might I propose an idea? It might do well to tie your lips together unless you further expose your ignorance. This isn't exactly the time for black comedy. Prosecutor Blackwell. Anyway, the court will recall the wire on which the school banner was hung. That wire was strung between the atom and the sage, which allowed students to run or reel in the school banner from the atom. The body could have easily been lowered down on the stage via this wire. Objection! Spare me your armchair theories. This wasn't some kind of high wire act. The body surely would have fallen. Yet there are no signs of blunt force trauma. Objection! Oh, you surprised me, Prosecutor Blackwell. You didn't actually think I failed to account for that. I am sure that's exactly what he thought. When we investigated the stage yesterday, the bottom part of the school banner had been tied into a patch like shape. So the body was hanging from it. Almost like the, uh, uh, the, the pouch carried the body downwards. Yeah. So it wasn't the Gavinia flag, it was the school banner. So I was wrong on that, but I still got the right idea. And pouches are useful for carrying things. What do you think this one could have carried? Well, go on. Please explain. The body was bundled into the pouch like sex tricks of the banner and sent down the wire. Whee! The body would have been down on that stage in a flash, and there'd be no need for a mat. Hmm, I've heard the phrase carrying the banner. But the banner doing the carrying? Objection! Huh. I've no patience for you and your cheap parlor tricks. Your claim is as shaky as a corpse perform that absurd high wire act. If you have an absolute objection, then just come out and say it. I love the music. I trust you recall the blood scenes left on the art room pottery. If the wire had been used to move the party, it would have been... It would have to be the window right above the quad. The one with the winch. However, the bloodstained pottery was next to the window above the maintenance area. It's got a point there. Ergo. The wire and banner had not at all to do with this case. Oh, um, haha. The blitzing putter, yes, I, I remember that. 
This doesn't look good. We'll be back to the map there if you don't do something. Well, Miss Sykes, hope you have something better this time than a circus act. If my wire theory is true, then that blood on the putty must have been... Blood at all? What the heck does that mean? What does blood at all mean? It doesn't make any sense! I, I, I mean, that's gotta be a mistranslation or something. That, that doesn't make any sense at all. Blood at all. What? Oh, wait. The blood on the party must not have been. Oh, you gotta read the sentence, Flightless Bird. Don't be an idiot. The blood on the, the party must not have been blood at all. Okay. So what she's saying is the blood is not blood. It's something else. Or it must not have been the victim's blood. Okay. I, I'm sorry. I'm a little bit slow. That's not a mistranslation. That's just my brain not working appropriately and reading a sentence. Okay. Well, I'm glad I've got that deduced. Uh, so it's got to be... It must not have been the blood, the victim's blood. So who was it? The killers? Maybe it was the killers. Because someone has a hand wrapped up and it looks a little bit bloody? Maybe it's not the victim's blood. Did the police check to see from whom the blood on the pottery came from? Shame on you, sex to know. Have a little more respect for the constabulary. I can't say that word. Constabulary? He didn't. He didn't. He actually didn't. Nope. <laughs> He actually did it. Oh my god. Full bite. It looks like they did check it. Ah, don't let it get you down, Puskin Blackwell. I mean, everyone makes mistakes. Spare me your cheek. We will not know either way till the test to run. True, but in the meantime, I'm going to press my claim as far as I can. Your baldness. I demand that the blood on the pottery be analyzed this instant. Of course. Shouldn't it take long to get the results back? I mean, if that's O'Connor's blood, then this is an open shot case. Which means this case could have been solved a long time ago if someone just tested that blood. Right? But then again, he could have always probably said, oh, the blood was just there because I was in the art room and my wound opened up. I, I guess he could have said that. I love the bird falling down with evidence. That's just one of my favorite things. Oh my, that was quick. We're history if it turns out to be the victim's blood. Please, please let it be someone else's. Hmm. Ah. It seems the blood was not from the victim. What? Furthermore, a comparison with other parties involved with this case reveals. That the blood belongs to one Hugh O'Connor. Gotcha. Score! Oh, the dots. Don't worry, Jenny. Try to relax. Hugh's hands. His hands were dripping with blood. Yeah! Y'all remember that? I, I I had kind of forgotten about that. Um, but she did say that ahead of time. But then again, he could always say that it was a surgery, right? But she said hands, not hand. Your Honor, as we saw earlier, the witness's left hand had suffered a serious injury. He sustained the wound in his struggle with the victim, and his blood got on the pottery. Then, Jersey saw these bloodstained hands as they passed each other on the first floor, huh? It's the only explanation that covers everything. Objection! Yeah, I knew you would object. I mean, it, it's going to happen. Um, you are so, so busted. But yet, yeah, we're going to drag on this case because something's going to come up that we didn't expect, right? There is but one way to turn aside her blade. But do not cast the blame on me. 
Your grudge is what's external. For it is she who forces you to expose the secret. Heh. <laughs> Fine. Whatever. Wow, how much dirt does he have on a hue? The court will observe this odd-looking envelope. It was inside that Miriam Scudabot's script that was found. It was inside that Miriam Scudabot's script was found. That was found? Yeah, okay. Scudabot? But didn't the prosecution already claim that? This envelope is the one that contained her script. Circumstances have changed, you see. Golden Boy had hidden this from us all. Well, let's see here. My word! Talk about the world's most painful paper cut. Hold on, I, I think I missed something. Um, this court will observe this odd looking envelope. It was inside this that my own script was found. But did the prosecution already claim that this envelope was the one that contained her script? Golden Boy hid this from us. And inside here is blood along with a bunch of other things. Including what looks to be like a blade with some blood on it. Is that a laptop? No. What is that? A paper clip? Well, let's see here. My word, talking about the world's most painful paper cut. Indeed, you can clearly see that if this envelope is not opened correctly, a powerful screen loaded blade will shoot forth, leaving a horrible gash upon a hand. The only one who had been told that the correct way to open it was Constance Court. Sssss. You really want to see my scripts that bad? Well, you better watch out. Read it without my permission and you'll wish you had it. Ah, she did say that, didn't she? Yes, Miriam wasn't kidding when she said that. The blood on the blade is the witnesses. One genius here tried to take a peek at the wrong script and paid for his foolishness. Ouch! This guy's the worst genius I've ever seen. Don't worry, Athena. The wound isn't that deep. We still got the wire theory. Yeah, I, I got it. Says the blood by the window overlooking the maintenance area isn't the victims. There's no longer any basis for denying the body was moved using the wire and banner. Therefore, the defense once again asserts just that. You call yourself a lawyer. <laughs> Don't you see the glaring contradiction? In your thinking. Huh? Court would like to remind the witness as well as not to point out. Huh. And you? How can you adhere to such outdated beliefs? But whatever. It seems you've forgotten the two statues that were on stage directly below the wire. A body slid sliding down that wire would have crashed into them. You care to explain that away? Well, they were broken, though. Why, well, I believe he's right. Statues and the wire are extremely close together. Ugh, uh, so the body would have collided with the statues. Hmm. What if they did collide? Wait, that's it. Speaking of those statues, we still don't know how they were broken. But if we assume the body crashed into them... Boop, boop. That would also explain that last sound we heard while we were in the waiting room. Oh, now that you mention it, you and Mr. Wright went out to the stage after you heard that sound, correct? Objection! Interesting. How very interesting. But may I ask just one question? When was it that you heard that said sound? It was a little after the back trail had started. Mr. Wright and I were practically bored of tears there in the waiting room when. Ah! 
Precisely. That sound he heard did happen while the body was being moved. That would place it during the mock trial. Oof! But she's the body wouldn't have been there before the mock trial started? Oof. You see, right before the mock trial started, I saw the body. He said he saw the body before the mock trial. If so, if so, he's a liar. Like, why are we gonna believe this guy? If, if he's the one who killed Constance Court, then he's the murderer, right? I mean, there's no other way to like beat around that bush. There's no reason to believe anything he has to say at this point. That might claim that the body was moved during the mock trial. Doesn't hold water. Oh, right. More than once who claimed it. Stupid contradiction. It's going to get me and our kids killed. No, it's going to get Junie killed. Focus on was on just the three suspects because the, because the body was moved before the mock trail. Well, that has been the major premise thus far. Your assertion, therefore, contradicts the very foundation of this case. Objection. Both sides still lack intercovertible evidence. I'm glad you said that. Both sides, yeah. Your side needs to, like, step it up too there, Blackwell. So, should we not also treat Golden Boy's testimony with some level of suspicion? Thank you! Thank you! I like this guy! I really do! Exactly! Hmm, good point. Ack! Proposed Blackwell is on our side. I bet he's figured out the truth behind this. I bet he's figured out the truth behind this case. Well, great. As long as he's not up to something else, which he probably is. If the statues really were broken when the body hit them, then Hugh's statement about seeing the body before the mocktail is a big fat lie. Okay, Mr. O'Connor. Let's get to the bottom of this contradiction about when he saw the body. Look me straight in the eyes and repeat your statement to me. Er, uh, like I said before, uh, before the mock trial, the, the body was, you know, uh... Hmm, I shall only say this once, Golden Boy. You had best tell the truth and do it now. That is, if you had wishes to enjoy the continued companionship of your body. Yikes! Now, out with it. Did you truly witness the body? Or were you just lying about it? Well, which is it? Uh, I, uh... You what? I... I... I, I never saw the body. Huh? Are you sure about that? Lie to escort again, I'll charge you perjury. There was no body on that stage. I've been lying about it this whole time. I'm... I'm sorry. Yes, we've exposed huge big lie for what it was. But why would he lie about this to begin with? Order! Base premise that the body was moved before the mock trial has been overturned. I imagine this has an impact on both the defense and the prosecution's case. Well, first I'd like to thank the prosecutor. That brings us one step closer to the truth. Now at least we know the body was moved using the wide, wide and scope banner. Indeed. That much I shall concede, Sykes to know. The body was moved, as you stated, and in the midst of the mock trial. Hmm, so both sides are satisfied with this then? Huh. The body was moved before the mock trial. We have our three suspects. But if the move took place in the midst of the mock trial, it is an entirely different story. Right. All three suspects were in the mock trial. That gives them solid alibis. Objection! Huh. How simplistic. Did you forget about the fact that Junior was running back and forth? Did you forget about the student in charge of the audio? Yep, I saw that coming like two seconds before he said it. I went, wait a second. There's one person who was technically not there. 
And, ah. Uh... Amidst the mock trial, she was one soul who could leave and re-enter the lecture hall. Who is this? Who's this person charging on you? Oh no, how could I forget? It was... Juniper Woods. Yep, what's the deal here? Why is she so large? Because she's running back and forth due to the audio. Ah! Indeed, the one who could enter the art room amidst the mock trial to move the party. was none other than the accused Juniper Woods, for she was in charge of the audio. Eee, no! What well, yes, I see. This does make perfect sense. This can't be happening. Instead of exposing Hugh's crime, Judy's in even deeper. Yeah, it's amazing how Black Bolt works. No matter how you slice it, we're cooked. And here I thought Prosecutor Blackwell was on our side, at least on this issue. The Twisted Samurai strikes again. Tis twisted? It smells like dirty rotten. Hmm. Your baldness. It is time to put an end to this farce. Hmm. The prosecution has presented a quite convincing case. But the defense has one last chance to voice any remaining objections. Well, Miss Sykes. Apollo, what are we going to do? I've got nothing left, nothing, not a near day. I've been trying to think of something, but I'm drawing a big blank too. Ugh, poor Junie. Unless we figure out something, she'll be. Uh, uh, object. Object. Um, um, uh, well, um, uh, I object to. Is it means? No, it's him. Wait, he objected? Heh. <laughs> <laughs> Stop right there. All ears to me. It's time you heard about the rare genius of Hugh O'Connor. Listen, and you will hear the secret behind my perfect crime. What the heck? He's confessing all of a sudden? I don't get what's going on here all of a sudden. Why would he confess? Doesn't make any sense at all. Like, what is going on here? P -p 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 Perfect. Crime? Wait, this is some serious deja vu. Didn't we just go sort of do this yesterday? Yeah, that's a good point. Yes, yes we did. This had better not be another one of his enraging traps. The murder, the movement of the body, the cover-up, it all sprang from my brilliant mind. Well, go ahead, arrest me. The real killer is right before you. So I was expecting someone like Means to jump up to try to defend Juni, or Apollo to jump up to defend Juni. I wasn't expecting Hero to basically say, I did it. That was a plot twist I didn't see coming. Order, order, I say, m -m -m Mr. Connor. You already confessed yesterday, then earlier today you recanted your confession. As if you mouth breathers could comprehend my genius, the end justifies the means. Now, bow down and kneel. Kneel before my great and maddening intellect. Objection! Enough. The only thing maddening is the ignominy you bear for all to see. For it is impossible for you to have been the perpetrator behind this crime. Wait, now you're saying he wasn't behind? I'm so confused right now. Oh wait, yeah, obviously. Duh. I I'm an idiot. No, obviously you're saying he's not behind because he believes Judy's behind it. Right, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. It erase everything I just said. Ah. There is no perfect crime, only a perfect alibi, for you were at the mock trial. And it is silly that I must remind you of this, but you are a participant the entire time. There shall be no mercy if you persist in hindering this trial with your silly act. Hmm. Hugh doesn't seem the least bit shaken by Blackwell's threat. Listen, Mr. Prosecutor. Calling that a perfect alibi is beyond contempt. Your Honor, I'd like to take this opportunity to offer further testimony. 
I will now demonstrate the very moment a genius that transcended even perfection. Q's confession. All right, my friends. Well, I think we're going to take a break here. I can take a break here, right? Okay, I can. Uh, I'm much love to you all. Oh, this, this case is going crazy all of a sudden. And why is he confessing? I have no idea that this was a curveball that I just didn't see coming. But there's only one way to find out. And that's uh, join me in the next episode of our blind let's play. It's Attorney Dual Destinies for the PS5. Turn about Academy. You guys have a wonderful, fantastic, amazing, awesome day. And until next time, so long and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. But before we go, please remember that you matter and you are brilliant and you are loved and you should always be true to yourself. Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.